Hey, welcome to Proven's Garage, the place where we make stuff. Sometimes we make it a couple times. For the last part of this build, we got the motor mounted and we got the axle mounted, and I kind of rebuilt that whole thing. So it turns out that where the axle was sitting was too high before it was way up here and that gave me not a lot of ground clearance. So I went and rebuilt the whole rear end, lowered everything down and now we should have some really good ground clearance. So today we're going to build some suspension and hopefully at least get the rear to where it can be almost sitting on its own wheels. Well, we got a bunch of junk here. And don't worry, I saved you the time of having to build all this stuff. I got it all prepared for you. Anyway, it's kind of hard to figure out what the hell I'm trying to build here. And I'm kind of a visual learner, so why don't we take a look? So this is the goal of this episode's adventures basically build two of these. Two A-arms on each side, a spindle connected by heim joints, and then connected to the frame by some tabs. And then we'll have some bushings in there, and we have to make some little bushing, threaded bushing insert type things here for the ends of the A-arms so that the heim joints can thread into those. And then we gotta make some way of holding this all the way through onto the frame so I'll be using some threaded rod and then same thing for where the heim joints pass through the spindle. So we got some parts cut out let's get at it. So most of this stuff I cut out using various garaging tools. Uh, angle blaster that's a good one. Um, horizontal bandsaw another good one. Turns out my horizontal bandsaw from Harbor Great also turns into a vertical bandsaw. And I've had this thing for probably a couple years now and never tried it. But with a couple little screws, you can take this plate and mount it on here. And then you got a vertical bandsaw and it actually works pretty well. I was honestly surprised. The only thing that sucks is you kind of got to straddle this thing while you're using it. But it works, and if you're limited on space, like I am, and limited on budget, like I am, this is a great way to have both a horizontal and a vertical bandsaw, and it is effective. So anyway, we had to make some plates that we're going to mount up to the hub. And this was kind of a challenge. I started off trying to use a hole saw to cut this out, and my hole saw crapped out on me. And then my belt on my drill press crapped out on me. So I ended up cutting the plate in half, and then cutting this out, mostly using the bandsaw that I just showed you, and then taking a die grinder and rounding out the rest. But we got it to work, it meets up, bolts go in, so we're good. So another thing I had to make to meet up to the heim joints is some little bushings. So I made these on the lathe. They fit pretty nice. And I made a little taper on the end so that the heim joint can meet up to that and be able to pivot on it. Not that it's going to need to pivot, but I got a little bit of an angle that these are going to sit at once this all goes together. And I had to make sure there was clearance for that and that it wasn't rubbing on the housing of the joint. So I'm going to get these tacked together, and then I'm going to tack together one of these spindles, and then we'll start to see what this thing's going to look like.
All right, so got the spindle all welded together. I MIG welded the inside just because it was really kind of tough to get into with the TIG torch and nobody's ever going to be able to see it. Um, and I TIGged the outside just because it's a nice clean weld and doesn't spatter all over the place. And I just like TIG welding. So as you can see, I built a jig for my A-arm and you'll see some numbers on there and those are representing where I need to make my cuts and where I need to mark to cut it with the hole saw to notch it out so it can all fit together. And you probably notice that those are definitely not inches. And there's a good reason for that. Um, when I designed this stuff in CAD, it doesn't give you measurements in fractions. It gives it to you in decimal places. And rulers don't have decimal places. So the easiest thing to do is convert it over into millimeters or centimeters or whatever you want to do. And then you can actually have accurate measurements and know exactly which mark you need to measure to. So I'm going to go get some pieces cut and then we'll get them set up in the jig and then see how this goes together. So I got all my pieces cut to length. And as you can see here, um, this pipe is pretty damn rusty, which is, I mean, it's not rusted through or anything, but there's surface rust and it looks like crap. So here's what I came up with. I took an old piece of uh, belt, uh, sanding belt from my belt sander and drilled some holes in it and mounted it to my tool post. And then I can stick one of these rusty mofos in the lathe and let the lathe do the sanding for me. So a little before and after, I'd say it looks a little bit better now. So there's several ways you can notch pipe and I've tried several other ways and one of these things is by far the easiest, at least that I've found. I'm trying to do this just by like cutting it out with an angle blaster or something or using a hole saw and like a vise is just, just off. And one of these just makes it easy. Got everything notched out, fits up really nice. Um, one of the toughest things with building something like this is when you weld metal, it wants to warp and change position. And so you gotta try to plan for that and plan where your welds are gonna go and expect it to kind of pull one way or the other. And in situations where you have a lot of welds that are like going all the way around something, it makes it kind of tough. So I'm gonna try my best, but I don't have a lot of confidence that this is going to be exactly the same shape when it's done, but it'll be close enough. It'll work. Working with brass is the best because we can just go hog.
You know, I'm just feeling so generous today, so I went ahead and made all these things for you again, so you don't have to. Um, so these are going to hold my heim joints into the ends of my A-arms here. And these are going to be my bushings that are going to sit in the upper end of the A-arm. And I'll have a threaded rod going through the whole thing. And hopefully that'll uh, not wear down in uh, 35 to 45 seconds. So we're going to get it together and get it mounted. All right. We got everything welded together. I got my ends welded in to hold my heim joints. And I even made some bolts by welding some nuts onto the end. Oh, who's that nut? Made some bolts by welding some nuts onto the end. these things nuts? Anyway, I made some bolts. And uh, instead of just leaving it so I had a nut on each side, I, I welded a nut on one end, and the other end is going to have a lock nut, nylon insert lock nut. And hopefully that stays together when we're ripping on this thing off-road. So, we'll see if it goes together. sitting on some rear suspension right now and I didn't show a lot of this stuff but mainly because I kept getting heckled by Carl Did you stop talking about nuts you shut your mouth Carl Prime me a river you big baby damn it you know you're ugly I told you to stay in your room Are and you, you just keep coming out maybe you should feed me more you piece of shit so we got some shock mounts on the bottom just connecting right to the A-arm. And then at the top, the way I worked it out was to basically build some supports on each side of the shock and then join them together with the bar to each side. And I'm pretty sure that'll be strong enough to hold what we want to throw on this thing, hopefully. But I think it came together pretty good. Damn it, Carl! They came together pretty good. And next time, we're gonna start getting some front suspension on. And then I'm probably gonna have to build some exhaust and run some wiring and some throttle cables so I can fire this thing up and maybe drive it around a little bit. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. Sorry we got heckled the whole time. Sorry we got heck of the whole time. Uh, next time we're gonna build some front suspension and hopefully get this thing ripping pretty soon. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to, I'm I'm gonna do something.